Hi everyone, today we're going to be working on Minecraft. Um, what's challenging about this piece is that it has a lot of tempo changes and a few meter changes. So I'm going to walk you through the overall structure a little bit. Um, in the beginning, moderato, uh, we have quarter note equals to 120. And then going on in measure 17, the a la march, we have um, quarter note equals to 108. And then measure 39, the slowly part, we have quarter note equals to 52. And then turn the page, we have Kamoto and measure 51, it's quarter note equals to 88. And then going on measure 63, we have also quarter note equals to 88. And the last change we have here is in measure 84, it's quarter note equals to 108. I'm not going to walk you through the whole piece measure by measure in this video. I'm just going to point out a few passages or um, some techniques that you can look into. For the first 16 measures, um, I think the thing you have to watch out for is the dynamic. Um, in the beginning we have piano, and then four measures later we have mezzo piano, and then mezzo forte, and then forte. So you have to leave space for yourself for this kind of growth, phrase by phrase. So don't start too loud. Um, start from piano and then have it in mind, plan it out. I'll play a little bit of the beginning so you get the feeling of how fast quarter note equals to 120 is. One, two, three, four. And then the next thing you have to look into is measure 16 going into 17. Um, we are going from arco to pizzicato. So pizzicato, again, is when you use your right hand to pluck the string. And we're plucking around this area on the fingerboard. And your right hand, for me, I extend my index finger and still hold the bowl with other fingers. Just extend your index finger and then pluck the string. And for this passage, um, starting from measure 17, I think one thing that can help you to have a clear, more articulate um, pizzicato is when you rest your finger on the string before you pluck it. So during the quarter rest, prepare your finger on the string and then pluck. So starting from measure 17, I'll play for two measures. One, two, three, four. So rest, plug, rest, plug. This way, the tempo is more steady and you have a clear pizzicato. Starting from the third beat of measure 26, we finally have melodies on our part. So two things you have to watch out in these three measures. First is the articulation, the stroke. And second is your bow placement, your bow distribution. Um, let me play it first so you get the feeling of what it should look like. So starting from measure 26, one, two, three. Take a close look at the fourth beat of measure 26. We have slur but also dots under it. So that means you have to articulate both notes within the slur. And how you do that, you do that with your in index finger. So you have to re-articulate the second note by pressing the index finger down again. The second thing I mentioned was um, bow placement. So the third beat of measure 26 we have to start from the middle of the bow because we don't want to be stuck down here for the reader articulation. We don't want to be stuck here. So we have to start from the middle of the bow so we have the space for two up bows. And then measure 28, the third beat, we end on a quarter note before we go to pizzicato again. So you have to get prepared for the transition of pizzicato. So for the quarter note in measure 28, stay towards the lower half of your, of your bowl so you have a smoother transition to get to pizzicato. If you end up 
being here on the quarter now, you have a long way to get to pizzicato and you won't get there in time. So stay in the lower half. In measure 35, we have a new marking called marcato. And for that, we want it to sound strong and accentuated. So you do that with rearticulating each note. So you have to have a clean start of each stroke. Um, in this case, from measure 35, you want it to sound like So by giving a little gap between notes, you can have the, have the time to prepare for the beginning of each stroke. So the hard part would be, the challenging part would be coming from up bow. So have a bite, have a um, nice grip of the string before you start. To give it the clean and strong feeling. Starting from measure 39, watch out for the key change. We no longer have F sharp here. And this is a pretty lyrical part, so make sure you have a smooth bow change um, and string crossing. Measure 51, it's the similar pizzicato section again, so I won't repeat myself. And then going to 63, it's again the more lyrical part. And if you can go listen to the music, um, you'll hear that we're basically playing with cello. So in this part, imagine that someone's pushing you on the first beat and you're coming in on the second beat. So the phrase is longer and you get the flow of this whole passage. And then one thing to watch out for is measure 73. We only have two beats in this measure for the crescendo. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, and then one, two, three, four. So watch out for this meter change here. And then measure 84, it's the marcato section again, but also it has seven, four. That means we have seven quarter notes in one measure. And the e easier way to think about it, I think about it as three plus four. So 84, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Have that in mind, you're less likely to lose track of where you're at. And in the last measure, um, we have a retard here, but on top of that, we have a retake. We want the last note to start from a down bow. So the beginning of this measure, and then the last note, we want a retake of down bow. So Second to the last note, we have down bow, and then we take again down bow, and then make a down and up in the last note so we can end strong here. So retired, crescendo, and then we take. The last measure has a lot going on. So one more time. Five, six, seven. <laughs> And let it ring at the end. That's it for the breakdown video. Um, if you want to see how the Hopi sound like, you can go watch the play along video and play along with me.